Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to St John's on this eighth Sunday of Trinity as we journey together through this season of ordinary time and are nourished by God through God's word and sacrament as we meet together. We come to meet God and open our lives to him as we do and prepare ourselves in our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Just a moment of quiet to bring to God in our hearts and minds those things of which we're most conscious today that weigh on our thoughts. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
receive a Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the past. Will you ever be holy God? You are the Lord of God. Will you Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Do please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, said the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, wall that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the prophets and apostles, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord.
And let us pray. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please be seated. Well, what chaos we've seen over the past 48 hours or so, courtesy of this massive IT meltdown that struck computer systems. We've seen the all too familiar images now of crowds of people at airports unable to make their summer getaways or travel on business trips as more than 8,000 flights were canceled. Although airports are largely reporting that the tech issue has been solved, the knock-on effects mean thousands of travelers are still trying to make their way home or go on holiday. Banking, healthcare, and payment systems were also affected. And the technical experts have been warning that a huge amount of work remains to be done in rebooting. Not only that, the boss of CrowdStrike, the cybersecurity firm responsible for the worldwide out IT outages, warned of possible further risks of criminals seeking to exploit the IT issues by offering fake fixes that could be used to access people's personal information. This has been a massive, unexpected disruption to what so many of us in the high-tech countries might have taken on trust, that the computer systems that touch so many aspects of our lives would have been safeguarded from such a huge meltdown. It's unsettling to recognize the issues have been caused beyond our control and that we as non-experts, and I'm talking as a non-expert, who have relied on technology working fine, are powerless to solve. It's an experience of confusion and perhaps even a little fear at being unable to help ourselves, even with all the resources at our disposal in the affluent West. Our readings today also feature people unable to help themselves, but who through God's love and compassion receive help in the midst of their great need. 
Jesus is surrounded by a crowd of people who are described as being like sheep without a shepherd, seeking guidance and wanting someone to pay attention to them. The words of the letter to the Ephesians were addressed to a community which had been alienated thanks to divisions between Jew and Gentile. And if we're honest with ourselves, we recognize the repetition of creating divisions in the church as over the ages, we found issue after issue to use to define who's in, who's out, who's acceptable, who's not. Jesus knows what it's like to be in need. The gospel writer Mark, for a second time here, describes Jesus as being too busy even to eat. He's with his disciples who have just returned from their first missionary journeys. Now they have Jesus to themselves for a bit, or they think they have. They're absolutely buzzing with enthusiasm, bursting to tell him what they've seen and done in his name. So Jesus invites them to find a deserted place where they can rest for a while and talk. That is, until the crowd who've been following Jesus catch up with them and upset their plan, they invade their space. So how does Jesus respond? I suspect I might have responded with irritation, got a bit narky, and offhand with those who had been impinging on my hour time and attention. Jesus doesn't show irritation, even if he might have felt it. He shows compassion, the very heart of that word, compassion, suffering with. He's able to think himself into the shoes, probably into the sandals of others and meet their needs. He sees they are sheep without a shepherd, without someone to guide, protect, and nurture them. And Jesus sees even deeper into the source of the problem. He's hungry and exhausted, but even so, he taught them, and not sparingly either. He began to teach them many things. Jesus gives generously of himself. The people seeking help, healing and wholeness receive something more as well. They're turned from a crowd into a community. I wonder how many people stranded at airports or seeking medical help during the past 48 hours or so, found common ground in adversity, perhaps offering mutual support. I hope many will have done so. Jesus draws people together and becomes the shepherd they need as he teaches them. The people in Ephesus who had been alienated and strangers lacking hope were brought together in Christ. The dividing wall of hostility between them was broken down. And in the New Testament, the love of Christ constantly reaches across boundaries, brings those boundaries down, demolishes walls that divide people. Some 30 plus, 34 years ago, I hate to think it's that long, we saw the powerful image of a wall of hostility, suspicion and division coming down. I was in the latter stages of studying for my degree in international relations at the end of the 1980s when the Berlin Wall fell. Coverage of those events included scenes and sounds of hammering as the wall was chipped away and the sounds of joy as separated people rushed towards each other. Unforgettable scenes. And such scenes and sounds are ours too, because in Christ, dividing walls fall. 
peace is made between people of difference. And through the Holy Spirit, everyone, everyone has access to God, the loving Father. So why do we sometimes find it hard to take a step towards one another? COVID perhaps has been a factor in that in recent years. But before then, how many of us have found it uncomfortable to take a step towards someone who we might not know and make space for them in our hearts, in our community? That's the nature of hospitality. Hospitality is much deeper and demanding than how we often think of it in terms of offering a welcome. Hospitality is the making of space for others, making time to hear their stories and what they're feeling and going through. That making of space and giving of time is one of the greatest gifts we can offer our neighbours. And that makes demands on each one of us. Today's readings remind us that we are God's community and that we are learning and will go on learning the ways of God. It's one thing to like the idea that in Jesus we have a good shepherd and that we are one flock in Christ. It's another thing to actively, intentionally build community. Like the crowd that arrives as Jesus and his disciples seek rest together, other people or events, as we've seen, crowd in on us, disrupt us, shake us up. They mess up our arrangements, our comfortable ideas, and stretch our love. And there we find it takes effort to truly be welcoming, hospitable, loving to the people that God sends our way. Love is costly. Love is demanding. And the power to do all this lies with God. The gifts we need to grow increasingly into God's community may well come from unlikely people when we're built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God, as the letter to the Ephesians states. Often those people who come shake up our ideas, make us feel a little bit vulnerable, are the people that can often remind us of God in our midst. Might we pray for the deeper experience, for the staying power that will enable us to live out and live into what is a wonderful, demanding, yet reconciling vocation that we all share as the community of God. May God bless us. May the shepherd lead and bind us together. And may we be open to all those who come into our lives. Amen. So let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Do please be seated for our prayers. And so let us pray for the peace of God in the church and in the world. Lord, grant to the church the grace to be still and not to lose holiness by being too busy. We pray for this congregation here in its life together and in its ministry and mission. Give her ministers lay and ordained grace to lead people through the way of quietness into the presence of their Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, speak through the tumult, the uproar of the world. Calm the strident noise of the powerful and the anxiety of the powerless. Pray for all who leads in politics, in business, throughout our world, that they would serve to help others, particularly those on the margins of our lives and societies. Have compassion on all who wander without direction and guide them into the paths of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us in the pressure of our daily lives the time to be still, to learn the wisdom that comes in silence. Help us to use our leisure well, so that we may have strength to help those whose lives are linked with ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in body or mind, for the injured and disabled, for those with emotional problems, those wrestling with addictions or depression or anxiety. And we pray for Betty Bourne, Enid King, Cess Taylor, John, Claire, Andrew, Josie, Barry, Russell, Joy, and Bobby. And hold before you in a moment of quiet those whom we know who are in need of that healing touch today. Come to them with your healing power. Relieve their afflictions and make them whole. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have passed over the waters of death and come to the shore of eternal life. For Cecilia, Ruth, Murray, and at this time when we remember Julian Burgess and Martin Kilner. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Grant them the peace which this world cannot give and the light 
which never fails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May our prayers be heard through Christ, the shepherd of the lost. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand as you're able for the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And of course, not one another sign of
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. you are the most holy one enthroned in splendor and light yet in the coming of your son jesus christ you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness embracing our humanity jesus showed us the way of salvation loving us to the end he gave himself to death for us dying for his own he set us free from the bonds of sin that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth 
to feast with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Divine, and all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
And let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. And together we pray, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The child is going to come and give us some notices. As always, everything you need to know for the forthcoming week is on the Green Bulletin. Um, and as always, there are refreshments served in Red Lion House immediately after this service. And on that note, wearing my chair of trustees hat, 
I'm very pleased to be able to announce that we are able now to start the final refurbishment of the building uh, at the beginning of September this year. Um, the builders are reckoned to be about three months, so it could, so it could be let's build us three months. <laughs> um, so thanks to everybody for their kindness and generosity and support. And um, we still require a bit more funding for the chairs and tables and other bits and bobs for the upstairs. But overall, it's good news. It should all be finished by the end of this year. So thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Good news indeed. Do hold the remaining fundraising and the work that needs to be done in your prayers. Also, I invite you to pray for PCC as it meets tomorrow evening. And also be praying for our neighbouring parishes. It's going to be announced this morning um, that Phyllis Bainbridge, who is overseeing um, Ralston, Anslow and Tutbury, will be retiring at the end of the year. Um, and that um, obviously we're now with St Chad's and St Mary's in Stretton um, already um, in vacancy um, since George retired. Um, please hold all our parishes uh, and those who will pr be providing cover for those parishes um, in your prayers as they go forward and pray for Phyllis as she prepares for retirement. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.